Hey, this is OXDF, and today we're going to look at a gRPC application, uh, specifically the PC box from Hack the Box. Um, I've just gotten root, and uh, the foothold has to do with this SQL injection in a gRPC application. And so I want to take a look at that, and we're going to walk through and examine the Python gRPC application and uh, see if we can understand what it's doing. So to start, gRPC is a protocol for um, generating quick APIs based on these protobuf uh, specifications or proto specifications. Um, I'm going to just actually start here with the quick start tutorial on for Python. Um, and what's interesting is basically they show us how we can create these uh, structured things that define functions and objects, um, but aren't quite code in like a Python sense. And then this is the important part. We run Python minus M gRPC tools proto and we pass it our dot proto files and then it generates, let's see, um, generates in this case, hello world underscore pv2 and hello world underscore pv2 dot gprc, two Python files. Um, and so I'll include a link to this in the notes, but we wanted to sort of keep that in mind as we jump into the code. Um, here we are in the opt apt directory. And if we take a look, um, there is our app.proto as well as app.py. Here's our underscore pv2 and underscore pv2 dot gprc files as well as middle.py and a SQLite database. Um, we can start with looking at the app.proto. In fact, let's, let's use vim app.proto. Um, and so you can see here, this is, you know, we define a simple app with three different functions, login, user, register, user, and get info. Um, and then we have, you know, what does a register user request looks like, a register user response, et cetera. Um, we just are defining these objects in kind of a simple proto syntax. And so when we run that and pass that to the gRPC uh, developer, we get these two other files. And so we'll take a look at this. Um, and this is just, I mean, frankly, non, non useful to me, right? It's a, it's a bunch of junk here, but we're gonna, this is the stuff that's used to make the proto um, gRPC protocol work. And it's very specifically says up here, you know, this is gener generated by the compiler, do not edit. So we won't edit this. Um, the other one's a little bit more useful. See if we go in here. This is going to give us the client and server classes corresponding to the protobuf defined services. So you can see we have now our simple app sub. Um, here's a login user. Here's a register user. Here's a get info. And so we are defining what those functions are. And then we have you know an app servicer and these different things here. Um, here we go. Here's the actual part of the. Uh, down, down here, we have simple app with some methods like login user, register user. So you can see these are things that are handled. Um, and we are going to use those in the, in the actual app. Um, let's jump out here and quit here for a second. If we look, um, I'm going to just real quickly, I'll just show you a um, middle.py. It's just some simple middleware to generate tokens. So we can generate a token here. Um, and then we can authorize a token here and check it's valid. Um, so we, nothing super there and super interesting there. But then we have Oops, not app, with uh, app.py. So here is our main application. And you can see um, we have a login class here. Um, let's go to the very bottom to start. So if it's main, we're going to set up logging and then we're going to run serve. Um, serve is an asynchronous function um, that is going to generate an gRPC asynchronous server. Um, we're then going to use, we imported this uh, app PRB gBRC the add simple server to login. So we're going to pass it this login function, which is or class, which is up here. And uh, then with that class pass it in, we have the rest of the stuff where we're going to enable reflection. That's what enables us to enumerate and get back um, different information about the API. Uh, we're going to add it on an insecure port. Um, that's interesting because by default, uh, gRPC runs over TLS. Um, but this doesn't. And actually, when I was enumerating the box originally, I had to add the plain text flag to my gRPC, grp curl uh, invocations to make sure otherwise it wouldn't work. And that's what that's so you can see it's doing it insecure. Uh, and then we just server start and server wait. Um, so and we can see sort of like the OK, so we have the register user here. We have log on user when we log on. Um, interestingly, we'll see here this is actually a correct um, escaped SQL call. Um, we're executing select blah blah blah. We're using it. I mean, we put these uh, question marks here, and then we use those are sort of fed in username and password. And when you do it this way through this kind of prepared statement, what this says is put the username in here, but you don't let that. That has to just be that string. It can't. 
lead, it can't be other SQL code. Um, and same thing with password here. Um, if we scroll down a little bit to get info, you can see instead of using the way here where we would, you know, put this should be a question mark and then we'd have a comma and then request ID, we are just using an F string to build this thing. So that is what gives me a SQL injection and allows me to put, uh, you know, other things in here that then get treated as SQL code as opposed to what the ID is. Um, and that's the issue. So um, this is a pretty short video and I'm going to leave it short here, but I just wanted to sort of, again, whenever I run into a new technology in a hack the box machine or in real life, um, you know, a lot of times I can, you can figure out how to get what you need. In this case, you know, I figured out how to get an SQL injection. I moved past and I moved on with my life. Um, but it's always important to come back and look at the technology, understand what it's doing, understand why it exists. Um, and uh, I'll encourage you, you know, if you've solved the hack the box, uh, PC box, go back on with the root shell and look through this thing. Um, change things. You know, we could try things like, um, you know, and I'll leave this, I won't have to do it here, I'll leave it for you, but, you know, make this a parameterized statement. So put a question mark here and move it over and see if you can fix the SQL injection. And uh, then you'll have a better understanding of how things should be done. Uh, I'm going to call it here. Thanks for hanging out with me today, and I'll talk to you next time. Bye.